Yeah, so we're on our way to Craig's and uh, to do some kicking. So we were just talking about Craig's Rugby Club and amazing facilities they have there. And uh, you, you said you noticed like um, a lot of sponsors and stuff from the States and Canada. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason why I guess uh, these things pop up is because I, I, my undergrad was in sports business. Oh, right. So a lot of stuff we did was around like sponsorship and how they get sponsors. That's what I just noticed when I was on the pitch the last day. Um, the, 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 the sponsors everywhere for them. Um, obviously, I guess they're needed to build such a class facility, but noticing that, like, yeah, the sponsors from the US, from Canada, places that probably aren't going to derive any value. You know, those businesses probably aren't going to get much value in terms of the community reinvesting money into their business but I think it's class to see then you know like lads go abroad or men and women go abroad and they, they make businesses but they still kind of stay connected to the to their hometown and so, so I, you know, I, they, I thought that was unique it was just something that just stuck out to me so fair play to them for thinking outside the box wherever the brains trust is up there in Craig's yeah it's, oh, look, it's, it's brilliant and obviously those uh, expats or people that might have emigrated from the area are giving back to the community it's it is amazing and you know just for myself I, I think it's given a bit of a kick in the backside to Conor Grumpy yeah. uh, you know uh, I don't mind being controversial yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean it, yeah. it's, it's um, ah like surely um, you know playing out in the States playing rugby out in the States uh, pretty much every pro team there has you train on a, you train on a 4G facility um, and it's just ah oh, just knowing you know the nice 4G so you're not getting ripped up you know your skin your skin's good but then just the consistency of it. Now I haven't been, in, I haven't trained in the sports car in years, but I know chatting to some of the lads, I, you know that side pitch and stuff. I still don't think I think it's still quite sand based and things like that. Mm. So I'm sure just the consistency of knowing what you're going to get kind of every day definitely makes it a bit easier when you're in the piss and wind and rain and stuff like that. It does. And yeah, it, yeah. It, it definitely wouldn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. It and and there's big plans, like there's big plans of redeveloping it and having the 5G in there and training. So it's great. It's great, and I, I can't wait to see it. You know. Yeah. Uh, what, once and spilt and you know those pitches like for grass pitches they're, they're as good as you can get like I used to love yeah. playing the sports ground like yeah, as a yeah. grass pitch and you know it is nice to be playing games on that but sometimes it's not practical if there's a lot of training and a yeah. lot of on, on the on the one pitch you know and uh, so what's what's your normal day like as a American football kicker and uh, punter yeah yeah um Change, change yeah, from the rugby. Big, big, big change. Oh, the first thing is now is it's it's a very it's very individual and like I'm on my own. Um, you don't have a team around you. You don't have people around who are doing the same thing. So you're you're very. It's just very individual at times. Just a bit lonely heading out to the pitch and dying in when it's pissing rain and you're just kind of belting balls by yourself. But like that's I think that's kind of that's also been a good part of it because um, something you know kind of being the first to do something to a degree and there's, there's excitement in that and helping others but anyway to answer your question um usually in, in the mornings now from training with a lot of the nfl lads and understanding kind of the level they're at and how they operate has obviously influenced me so mornings is generally <clears throat> just a bit of stretching um and if I'm, if I'm not kicking, I might do yoga. If I am kicking, I just do some general stretching. But I also like just to kind of read and kind of plan for the day, reflect and plan. So a lot, a lot of writing because I found out that the lads say it's like 90% mental at, at that level, at the top level. You know, everyone's a good kicker. Right. It's mental. So I, every morning I like to read a little bit, usually around performance stuff for... Um, performance stuff or just kind of like mindset in general and just kind of your outlook I'd say um, I so yeah yeah, that's something that's that I, would never, I never, never would have done in rugby I probably would have been a bit yeah. probably would, might have been a bit odd maybe to do these things but I relied like and I, sorry a lot of this is some performance stuff but a lot of it's just kind of your outlook in life or outlook in situations how you how you respond to different stimulus good or bad um, and again kicking is I'd say kicking is like golf you know you got to be the zen fella you got to be very zen it's just you and the ball for the most part and okay. you need to be very relaxed and quiet when everything around you is chaotic so anyway I found all these things have helped me so that generally that's kind of what I get up to in the morning that, that could take anywhere from an hour to two depending on how much I read or what it is I'm yeah how, how I'm kind of feeling about that and then uh, usually every second or third day I'd go kick um, 
I, when I first started, I'd go kick every day. I tried to go kick every day, um, but once I like, met the lads who do it, they were like, no, 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 you, do, you don't do that because it, it, injury, the odds of injury is high. The odds of injury is high because it's a pretty explosive um, motion. So now kind of maybe yeah, every second or third day, depending on how I'm feeling, I'll go kick. Um, and then beyond that then is just gym sessions. But as we were kind of chatting about earlier, gym now is a lot more around just trying to feel good and you have your body feel strong, but not putting yourself in, in different positions where you might, the odds of injury is high. And for me, I know that's squatting and deadlifting, things like that. So I'm just trying, I've definitely changed my gym routine a lot from football to rugby because uh, again, it's all about just trying to be fit and available. Like in rugby, be fit and available, but there's a lot more of a business element to this, to football. So if you miss a few training sessions, um, you, you could be cut at any point because your contract's not no contract is guaranteed you can sign for four years you can be gone in four days so uh, yeah it's, that's that, that's a mad piece of it so just trying to be fit and healthy is, is, is a huge part of it right and what's the point to sign the contract then yeah. like are they null and void like uh, yeah they're, they're not, yeah, non, so, so basically there's something some, if you sign a contract so say you a big dog a big yeah. player you, you might sign a contract and then if you ever notice you might say X player signed for a four year deal for 100 million yeah. with 5 million guaranteed uh, they often say that so the 5 right. million is guaranteed, guaranteed so you know you're getting that ah, but, okay. but, but for someone like me yeah. I'll even if I go on to play in the NFL for the next 6 years say yeah. um I'll never get a guaranteed contract. I'll, I might get, say, if I signed a three million deal, yeah. I might get a hundred grand guarantee. But like as kickers, we don't, we don't get the guarantee really. So you just, are, you know, every week you're up on the chop block, you're up there to perform, and so it's a. Uh, there's no sense of uh, you know, guarantee around it all. Um, right, right. But that's that's what that means when you hear the guarantees. Yes. The rest of that contract, the lad has to the lad has to perform or meet any incentives that he has to meet. Otherwise, you can be you can be cut at any time. I get and you. I've been I I know a few of the lads. I met a lad down in uh, the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. I went down to meet him for a kicking session one day. He just signed to them two days beforehand, and uh, I was on the pitch with them. We we're doing a kicking session. It was a day off for him, and he gets a phone call. Uh, and then he goes, Tiger, I have to go back to the stadium. So we drove. I was like, oh shit, okay. I knew something was wrong because if the GM calls you and tells you to get to get back pretty quick, um, and then you know, on the, as, as we're driving back, he was saying, he's like, I think I'm going to be cut. Um, they're going to be cut, and I was like, what? Well, he just got here two days ago, and um, lo and behold, unfortunately, he was he was released, and you know, on a plane that night again, and I think he's been through twelve different teams. Oh. Um, so it's that's kind of the life of a. Uh, Life of life of a professional footballer, but more American footballer, or, um, but more so kickers and punters were more were they're more um, disposable almost. Disposable, um, yeah, because yeah. they just think they're growing trees, so they'll find another one. But the good teams, like in any sport, the, the ones that do well, the teams generally stick by them and they have a bit of longevity. But the other teams, like head coaches in sports, they just keep chopping and changing, and there's you know it's hard to find a bit of stability. But yeah, there's, there's that side of the sport that I'm. Mm. I'm learning about it. Same applies me to me in Canada. Exact same in Canada. Um, so yeah, you just you, your performance is your currency, and if you're not performing, there's, there's no sense of uh, well, you know, next season because there, there likely won't be a next season. Wow, wow, that's uh, yeah, like the the short because yeah, like in rugby, like if you sign one, two, three year deal, it's pretty much guaranteed. Yeah. Unless like there will be a clause, you know, if you're out injured for more than nine months, either side yeah, can terminate yeah. or whatever. But yeah, wow, that's very disposable. But you know, t- challenging. So it's not all glamour. You know, you no, see, no, you'll no. see the big you know uh, kicks to win the game and overtime and stuff like that yeah. you know it's all glamorous but the, the whole work and everything behind it and no that's guarantees just yeah. that's just, yeah, well, well, as I said I've just learned you know that, that's part of it and all I can do is um, is just kind of attack it and embrace every opportunity yeah. you get and yeah. if it goes great thankfully it's going well so far and I'm, and I'm moving up great um, and, and if it doesn't then I just you kind of accept it but it's not I, as long as you go into it with the, the kind of right mindset around yeah I've, I use the word embrace a lot but like embrace the opportunity to really attack it and as long as I do that 
whether that brings me to the NFL or another job in six weeks' time, I, I genuinely feel comfortable enough that I, if I have, if I maintain that mindset, yeah, what will be will be, and um, and that again that goes back to a lot of the reading, what you mm. learned about is just kind of, you know, you control what you control, and a lot of, a lot of external things are at play, so you, you you just you just kind of have to roll with it, and yeah, so that's I don't get too bogged down because I think if you did, yeah, <laughs> you'd be in a bit of trouble. Good man, no fair play. I, I like a bit of mindfulness now myself. You know, yeah. I I've been kind of doing that like properly in the last four or five years, and I, I just find it um, brilliant in every yeah. area of life. And are you are you the first Irish person to attempt this to, to attempt to become uh, an NFL kicker? Yeah. So the, the, there has been a lad that was born in Ireland, but like moved to the states, played in college, things like that. Who did who did play in the NFL back in the eighties? Right. Um, yeah. Well, I, as I, said, I think he moved over relatively young and just went through went through the system. So right, yeah, right, I'm definitely yeah. I'm definitely the first to to have come out of from if this is the pathway coming out of from this angle. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I'm definitely the first that yeah that hasn't done. You know, everyone everyone plays in college. You have to play. Well, I'm, I, I haven't, but yeah. you have to play. And that, right, that was yeah. my biggest stumbling block. Like, okay. What, what's your college footage? Where'd you play in college? And obviously, I just was shy. So I was playing rugby. Yeah, know. yeah. A few clips from yeah, kicking yeah. with Connacht in exactly. all regions that's, or whatever. Yeah, that's that, that, literally that's what I should have shown them. Right. Um, yeah. So that that was the. I didn't realize how important that was. I just thought kicking. Uh, sure, I can show. Them, said I just showed them clips of me playing playing rugby and kicking kicking from all angles and doing well and. You know, they were like, yeah, that's great, but you were like, you're trying to get into, you know, there's only two pro leagues in the world in football. Yeah. You know, and again, I didn't understand that. You know, rugby, there's multiple leagues around the world and there's different levels. This, there's, there's only really two. Um, so I didn't realise the main entry, the main thing on your CV is college. So I didn't have that. So I, I spent the last year just moving around, trying to trying to play, and that brought me to bloody Poland um, really? to play out there. Yeah, because I had to play. I had to well, the European, European League. League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the Polish team, so uh, I, I was told. You know, I was told if I want to play, you have to go get game tape. And so then I was sort of shit. Where in the world can I play football? That's only going to be a respectable level. And thankfully, I got five games in the US and um, in, in the league there, which is which is really good. And then. Five, five or six games in the European League, which really fortunate that, that just popped. It's a brand new league that started last year, so that was perfect for me. Um, and then, you know, on the back of that footage, I got signed to, to go to the Canadian League. So um, that's yeah, that's kind of the short yeah. version of how that that one played out. And who have you signed for, and when are you starting? So I've signed for teams uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats. So <clears throat> it's the city of Hamilton, and we so it's called training camp. So we start training camp I think the second week of May. Um, we're looking forward to it because, like, I don't, I don't have a clue. Really. No, I've never done, oh, yeah. never done this. And there's, yeah. you know, I, I call, as I said, sometimes we can be a bit lonely and stuff because there's no one here to kind of sit down and chat to. But I do. I've called a few of the lads out there to say, like, well, what, what, what would I, what, what should I expect? Um, but yeah, we start training camp. But from what I know, it's going to be, you're in. I think it's three weeks. I think, you know, they cut the roster down to, I think like. 50s maybe and there'll probably be like 80 guys there nice. so for me as a kicker I think there'll be so I'm unique that I'm doing kicking and punting okay uh, most guys just do one or the other okay and to play in the NFL you do one or the other whereas in the CFL um, they like they do prefer if one guy can roster spots are precious so if one guy can fill two roles oh, kicker and punter okay. that, it's not com- I think only one team last year used every other team had two guys but I think only one team last year did that but from my rugby background, I'm used to doing both, so I've maintained doing both. So I'm going in there doing both, and then I think there'll be oh, maybe one other kicker and one other punter in in camp. So then you know you just it's I think three weeks just being a hotel and training, and I think you're training pretty much at kicking it pretty much every day. It's it's pretty full on because they need to get the squad to cut down pretty quick. So I think at the end of every week they're chopping they're chopping lads and until they get it down to the right number. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's all happening throughout May, and then I think we have preseason games at the start of June, and then the season starts I think mid June. So it's all going to come pretty thick and fast uh, once I get going out there. And thankfully out there, I've watched I watched the last season. Um, for example, our first game is in a place called Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. But like you know, they have a state and state of the art stadium. I think they get like 30, 30, 30 to forty thousand every week. So like wow. they take it seriously up there. So that's going to be cool getting to experience that kind of, hopefully get to experience that week in week out um, that's kind of yeah that's exciting yeah and when did you decide to do it or when did the idea come I know you were playing 
out in the States with the Free Jacks uh, yeah. playing rugby? Um, Covid. Well, so, well, so, so playing play, play rugby in the US. Uh, so you, you went from Connacht to. I went from New Connacht. England. I spent a, a small bit of time in a town Rivigo in Italy. Oh, okay. but I was, oh did I was, you? Yeah, I was bad jack, so oh, I, I had right. to get myself. Yeah, like my last year in Connacht, I was not not in good shape, so I ended up getting my shoulder reconstructed. Okay. Um, and then I went to the States with the intention of just studying and. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really like rugby at that time. But last year and a bit, I think it was Pat's first year. Okay. I didn't. I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy rugby at all. Um, just, I would, yeah, just wasn't wasn't fit at all. And then when you're trying to play, when you're trying to play when you're not fit or you're not healthy, especially shoulder, it was um, it was coming out a lot. Like it was, it would just slip out. And anyway, but like yeah. silver, it's all worked out well. So you know these things. As I said, you kind of one door closed. Yeah. So, so thankfully, my shoulder was coming out. <laughs> Looking back at it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, went over there just to study initially, and then that was going well. Really enjoyed it, and uh, Major League Rugby came along. No, no intention of playing. I was like, I'm done with full time rugby. I was enjoying college, just having the crack, enjoying that. And so I said, one or two teams called me. I said no, and then San Diego called me pretty quickly. I was like, actually, San Diego, yeah, I could go live there and play with the rugby. <laughs> Um, so I went out there. Uh, Rob Holdley. Oh, Rob! Rob, Rob, was, Rob was the head coach. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, I played with yeah, Rob in yeah, Wasps. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. You, but just as I thought that. Um, top man, top yeah, man. Top, uh, Most stylish dressed man oh, I've ever played rugby yeah, with. He's, he's still the same. He's still the same. Come on, Rob! Yeah. So, <laughs> no, he, he uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. He's, um, no, he, he was. He just he really it was cool to, to just see. I really liked really liked him and how he kind of operated and stuff. So I decided, you know what, I went out there and played. I had a phone call too with him because I talked to other teams. I no disrespect to them, but when I talked to Rob, it was kind of like, oh, okay, then, okay, I'll go back for this. You know, like he had his ducks in a row, you can say. Yeah, um, yeah. And as I said, the sunshine in San Diego didn't hurt. So I anyway, played there and that was great and enjoyed that. And then um, moved to the Free Jacks because Boston was kind of homely for me. Spent a lot of time there, so went back to Boston, and then U.S. Caps came after that, yeah. and uh, COVID came along then, and then just everyone always told me to try kick footballs because yeah, in Saturday kicking isn't great in the U.S. Like they're amazing throwing, like baseball, football, but like the, the foot's not great. So mm. people always said to give it a go, and then I was coaching a team in Boston, and I just uh, one of the players mentioned he's a high school coach. This is probably September 2020, mm. and. Uh, just said you know, oh, I was jump bored one day so I got some balls off and started just started kicking them and people were walking around the track watching just who were just walking and they saw me kick and people started coming over and saying like hey who the hell are you like because okay. I was kicking quite well and then you know that kind of was like oh maybe maybe there's something in maybe this. there's something here so I go yeah. home and you're googling and yeah. um, that was September and then in January uh, the, ne- you know, the next few months I just kind of kicked for a bit of fun and kept kind of doing it and then Long story short, then I had to tell my team I wasn't coming back, and I was moving to San Diego to try and kick footballs. Wow! So yeah. Good man, good man. How many caps did you get for two? USA two, two caps. Oh, two good caps man. and then non cap game. So two two proper full caps and then. Good man. Uh, well done. Yeah, that was well cool. Done. That was cool. That was a big part of why yeah. I was happy to. Oh man, that's um, brilliant. I was happy to. I was happy to kind of move on. I was like, I was pretty happy with what I achieved, and yeah. it would have been great to get more caps and stuff, mm. but like. I can say hand on heart, I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy to have done it, but I'm very happy now, kind of where I am. So yeah. that that was if I if I didn't if I didn't have again only two caps, but if I didn't have those two caps, I probably I probably would have been. I probably might. It would have been much harder to make the move. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he'd be chasing the caps. Because like, I knew I was there, thereabouts, and so. But yeah, but now that I got, when I got those and then Cobra came along, it was yeah. kind of like. You know what? If not, if not now, never. In terms of, I was 28 going 29, so uh, I had to, I had to make the move. And yeah, I can definitely say I'm very, very happy that I, that I, I kind of a bit of a fucking approach, kind of just, just to see where it takes us. Um, so yeah, that was how that kind of came about. Good man. Oh, that's a, that's a big deal. Like getting capped at internationals, a massive. Uh massive thing so well done um, I, I was on three tours for Ireland I didn't get a cap but uh, I've I've played you know with the Ireland A and all that but you know it is it, it is you know one cap two caps 150 caps it doesn't matter there, there is uh, it's, it's what we all dream of mm. 
you know so well done man that, that's just amazing yeah. and uh, yeah fair play to you for for giving something completely different a go and it's it's working out well and you know geez, I really wish you the best and um, you know no matter as you say you've the right attitude you know that like if you're going to give it your best shot if it works out it works and if it doesn't you've learned something new and you've yeah. done something different yeah and, um, at least you know, the big thing for me is yeah. there'll be no sense of regret around any of it yeah. that, that was part of the you know, decision like when I when I was trying to make the decision you know do I, do I leave rugby do I leave kind of a Something that something that I really enjoy doing at the time. Mm. Uh, like I definitely fall back in love with the game. So like, do I have oh, at that brilliant. point? Yeah, at that point I was enjoying it again. Great. I was like, do I leave this and you know potentially more caps on the horizon? Yeah. I was still in the you know the, the playing squad for the US and all those things were happening. Um, but when when I got told by the guy John Carney, he did twenty four years in the NFL. I went out and trained with him, and when I got told by him that. Look, the odds, the odds of you getting to where you want to go to are near zero. If you haven't played in college, you're 28, 29. Lo- loads of reasons. But I've seen you kick balls that are at the kind of NFL level. I think that's exciting. That was kind of his. That was his feedback. Wow. So I remember just being wow. like, going, kind of flying back to flying back to Boston and being like, "Geez, what do I, wow. what do I do?" But I, I, yeah. I, I, I guess I kind of knew. I knew I wanted to do the football thing. It was almost as well just thinking like, geez, I didn't. I didn't do too much research into how diff- how how limited opportunities there are in right. football yeah. Uh, yeah. to play. And so I, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand how many people were trying to do it and how good the good guys are. I think that was the biggest thing when I got out there and. You know, you see lads miss on TV. Yeah. You say, ah, oh, Jesus, what? Kick it fucking straight. You know, like, you think that looks easy. Um, but Jordan got out there and was doing it, and I met the lads who play, as they say in the States, who play on Sundays, meaning they play in the NFL. You know, it's kind of like, oh, wow, okay, this, these like, these boys are good. Um, the level is probably higher than I thought, so, you know, I try to feel, figure all of that out. Um, but yeah, no, again, absolutely loving it. And thankfully, now I've, I've signed one of the. CFL's NFL's the NFL's number one, but CFL's number two. So um, to to be there now and yeah, it's, just, it'd be cool as well to kind of a lot of Irish people are been quite interested to be honest yeah. um, and reaching out and uh, whether it's people just being interested or it's been a quite a, not quite a few maybe twenty to thirty lads have reached out saying shit I'd love I'd love yeah. to love to do this and I've helped one guy he's already out in the states in college now kicking um, a soccer player from Ballinasloe oh, um, and he's well. loving it so. That, that's part of it. Um, Rob used to use the term uh, pioneers because first year of Major League Rugby, we were the first first team. So yes. this pioneer mentality, be the first to kind of pave a path. And that always stuck with me. Like just because uh, like that was kind of something we galvanized around, you know, as a playing group. But that idea always, always stuck with me. And um, yeah. that's kind of what I tell myself a little bit. Like, you know, you, you can be that. You can, you can be the pioneer for kind of Irish fellas and kickers and punters and open up the door because there's loads of Australians in, the, in America now kicking and punting and why did it happen? Why there's over a hundred in college and like nine in the NFL, like huge amount punting specifically. They dominate. They dominate. Why? Um, some fella, uh, a former professional AFL player, yeah. went over. I think in his late in his late twenties, early thirties, had a crack off, made break into the NFL. He did. He didn't make that final step into the NFL. But he he went that far. He showed wow. as possible, open the doors, and now he's he coaches. He coaches. I mean, with Pro Kick Australia, he runs in Australia now. As I said, they've had over there's over a hundred kids and co- kickers in college, punters in college. I think around nine in the NFL. So he was that pioneer, and I can't touch it. Like Ireland, we play Gaelic, we play soccer, we play rugby, we can kick. Yeah, so we can it, kick. It, yeah. And there's a few lads playing college, playing in college now in the US. Um, so we can kick definitely. Um, so. That, yeah. That's also part of part of the journey, I guess, for me. Is t- obviously want to selfishly do my thing, but I hope that whenever I'm done with this, that I, yeah. that like you know, you can you can show there's a path there, yes, and yes. Other, other lads can walk it, and because it's class experiences. So what I'm taking from that is what you're saying is for a 44 year old <laughs> retired tight head prop 
there's a chance. 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 Yeah, yeah, so it's chance. not a no. <laughs> no, it's, there's a chance. So what is the chance? We're talking what? 0.00001% chance? Add, add another two or three zeros. Okay. Let's say one. But there's a chance. <laughs> Oh, okay, but yeah. yeah, good, good. Yeah. Okay, so so here we go. Let's let's see what how the first session goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it, I saw I've seen you kick I saw you kicking rugby balls. I think you, um, you, you, yeah, I think you'd be good. I think you'd be, I think you'd be better than whatever you think in your head. Because I found when I first started, I was like, oh, you're better than you think. Um, but then I guess you, we don't have the luxury of it today, but it's a bit different when you have the big dome on your head and you have a, oh, yeah. a six foot, you have the pads on, a six foot six fella, at least athlete, yeah. rushing off the edge to try and block it. So you got to learn to be fat, yeah, fast, fast, fast in how you approach, you, know, you have to get the kick off basically. Okay, right. 1.2, 1.3 seconds. Oh, jeepers, right. That's from okay. when it's snapped eight yards, caught, place, bang, 1.2, 1.3. Rapid, like you're approaching a ball that isn't there as a kick from your perspective as the kicker. Oh, no way! So, right. first, first thing okay. first, you got to be wow. quick. Second thing, assuming you're quick enough, you got to get it up, you got to get it high because the boys are all standing and jumping, and as I said, they're all massive men as it is. Um, so you got to get it up, and then if you achieve A and B, C is get it straight, get it straight, and get <laughs> so, it far enough, yeah, and far enough, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, th that's kind of on field goals and punting. The, Punting then is again you got to be quick. It's always a f be quick and get it up. And then for punting then it's about hang time and distance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're the they're the, probably the biggest things that. You know, at first I was just kicking. And I, I was never thinking about being quick and get it up. You know, I was just kicking for the first few months um, by myself or weeks by myself. But then once you get out and you start training, you realise oh shit, I never thought about all of those bits and bobs. I get you. Um, so yeah, there's that, there's that to do with as well. Ah, so it's come, it is different. Like uh, you know, as kicking in rugby, a goal kick conversion or whatever, you have that minute to place the ball. Yeah. So you're in your own time pretty yeah, much. Big but, time, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I suppose kicking like punting and that, you know, in general play, you probably don't have much time in no. rugby either. either no. But you know, um, and which do you prefer, kicking or punting, <sighs> or both? I'd say. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so I I I like. Left oh, it is oh, nice. Nice. lovely. Nice it's here, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Nice part of the country. And Ross Common. Uh, yeah. Can't go wrong. No. Um, oh. Initially, it was kicking. Yeah, field, called field goals kicking mm. because it felt most similar to to rugby. But that was when that was when I was just training by myself. So like we're going to do today you know you're not wearing all the gear you're just kicking in a very controlled environment um and controlled meaning you know the ball's placed on it they call them sticks so the ball's off the ground so it's not elevated on a tee but it's off the ground but you have a little stick on top to hold it in place you know you control everything like in rugby mm. so initially that was my preference because it felt very similar um but then i realized when you start playing games you do lose the control in terms of you know now the ball's not being played you know the ball's not there it's all happening in 1.2, 1.3 seconds. Uh, you gotta rely, rely so much on the holder, the lad catching, placing the ball, and he has to get the laces out, you know, the laces of the ball, you gotta get that. So a lot, there's a lot going on. So when I started playing games, I realized, okay, this is very different to, you know, you're, the ball isn't being set like you want it to be set every time, because it's just, it's just not, it'd be great if it was. So then I actually started to gravitate more towards punting, because mm. as a punter, you, you are your own holder. You know, there's no one. I get you. You get to get the snap yes. to you, but you control a lot more. I get you. You know, there's one piece of the pie taken out in terms of there's no holder. You, you know, you you can you catch and kick. So I um I I actually enjoy that because yeah, just just the sense of control and you you kind of own it more. It's more on you because I, I miss one or two kicks that um it's my job to put it through. Uh, but it's pretty hard when the ball's leaning like yeah. two or three inches to the left versus to the right, like to the right. Like your sweet spot's totally compromised. No, no one on TV or no one understands no. as a clue what, no. what went and on. And no one cares. Yeah, no, yeah, no, <laughs> no yeah. one cares. Well, you do. Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. trust me. When you go to the coach, uh, yeah. you're yeah. like, doing what happened there? And it's like, you're not, you're not going to throw the ladder under the bus. But as yeah. I found, well, as I, I didn't, but as I since found out that you most definitely do because 
bro. If you don't tell the coach, hey, the ball was leaned the wrong way, it was th- like your sweet spot is totally moved, um, and you feel it on your foot instantly. Um, so, oh, like I, I learned, is like, look, yeah, they they put their hand up um, and say, I fucked up my job because they have their job. Yes. Uh, if they don't do their job, your job the, becomes very difficult. Very if the difficult. snapper doesn't get it right, then the yeah. holder has to get it right, then you have to get it right. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no wiggle room. Time wise, you, know, you, okay. you, you don't have you don't, you're 1.2, 1.3. There's not a whole lot of time there to to readjust or take. You can't pause. Yeah. You can't pause. If you, if you pause your block, that's just right. You, 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 you just can't. Yeah. Um, so I anyway, for all those reasons, certainly towards punting. Plus, from from playing rugby, uh, I had the advantage of I was quite comfortable kind of kicking with my body shaped at different angles. Okay. Um, okay. Football, they punt very. It's very robotic. Everything is facing their target. Their, their shoulders, their hips is very aligned to wherever they're kicking. So you can, the path they walk is very straight. Their leg is very straight. But from playing rugby, I can have everything it's kind of pointed a little bit right. But or like Gaelic. Yeah. You can swipe across your body. Yes. And pump it into the left corner. I get you. So I was able. That's something I was quite comfortable doing. Um, and it was good. It was very, it was helpful. So I, I probably, I, I probably was punting to a high level that I was kicking because I was able to to be a little bit unorthodox, yeah. which is good because then the returner, the guy catching, has to try and go back up field. Mm-hmm. Hard for him because they anticipate where the ball's going to go a little bit based off your body language. So I was able to sell them different oh, things. Oh, you could sell them different. Yeah. You could line up this way, but I yeah, can kick swipe, it. Yeah. Ah, I get you. So little things like that, um, an advantage, but. Interestingly, I'd hoped that would be the NFL is very tradition traditional, very traditional, and surprisingly not as open minded as you think it would be. Mm. Meaning, so things like that, I can show them on tape. Hey, I'm the ability to do this. Um, they'd be like, oh wow, that's really good. That's good. Like that's that looks great. But uh, no, we, we just kind of want to just want to keep it traditional. Um, so I, I've been kind of told from agents and people yeah. I've talked to, guys in the NFL is. That would hopefully start changing as a younger batch of coaches come, like uh, maybe in any sport. There's yeah. that kind of that, that old school and new school. Yeah. So, for me, thankfully, the have the Tiger Cats recognised there was a very much a new school being like, well, this guy can do the traditional stuff, but he also kind of shows gives us a different box of tricks as well. Okay. Um, so that yeah. that was that was a big part of, of why they liked me. And I'm um, hoping you know my goal is uh, yeah short term is just we get on the pitch and I you know in training can perform. And then from there, me just perform, perform for them because at the end of the day, and if I, I could end up spending the next six years of my career playing for Hamilton, and if that's the case, like yeah. it's it's it's, it's awesome. a great city, great team, great league. So like the, there'd be absolutely no, because there's only 32 jobs in the NFL, uh, 32 yeah. jobs in the world, yeah. you know, in the world, yeah. So there's 32, yeah. 32 wow. Wow. NFL jobs and then nine CFL jobs. That's it in terms of. And you've got one of those. Yeah. Oh so, man! When so it's a small. Forty-one jobs, and you've got one of them. Yeah. Well, well done. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I didn't do all that math at the time. But it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. If I started You're probably that, better off. You no, didn't. no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You're just oblivious. To yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. A bit ignorant to it all. Yeah. Oblivious and just kind of as a, just swing the leg and see what happens. Yeah. But the more I got into it, the more I kind of started. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be told the odds, the numbers. You're kind of like, yeah. oh Jesus, yeah, okay. There's no. Joe, you can't go play for Galway to get experience. You can't go play for oh, Craig right. to get experience. Okay, that doesn't right. exist. Ah. That doesn't exist. So there's not as much opportunity to even prove yourself. Hence why I had to go to Poland. You know, like the, the, so that, that league just popped up, so I got lucky that league opened up. Uh, but you know, the, the, the exact so where do you prove yourself yeah. in college? I can't play in college. So so, like, so that yeah. was that, that was the big mm. the conundrum what I call it. That was the, yeah, the big kind of stumbling block where yeah. I ran into a lot, so um, the opportunity to play is is few and far between, wow. and as you can imagine, with such a limited opportunity, a lot of people trying to get in, then it's uh, it's competitive. But again, thankfully, I've, I've managed to finagle away into it all, and here we are now. Good man, we're on our way to Craig's, and we're almost there. And-